What do Azure Virtual Desktop, MSIX AppAttach, Citrix, VMware, Configuration Manager, Endpoint Manager, AppV, your images, and the Microsoft Store all have in common? The answer? Applications. So if you want to simplify your application management and get more done in less time, you're in the right place. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. No matter if you're in your own data center, a colo, or the public cloud, it's your applications and your data that help your users and your customers to be productive on their devices. Now, all the different platforms that I mentioned in the beginning all have their own way of packaging and managing all their apps, which is a whole lot of extra work. And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in. Liquid allows you to have one solution to manage all of that stuff in a simple user interface that can allow you the flexibility to continue to manage all of these multiple platforms through one interface or completely replace them for your application delivery. And I have a lot of thoughts to share with you as we walk through this review of what Liquid offers, who I believe this solution is for, pros and cons and all of that detail that you need to know. Liquid can be set up as an application server in your environment or what I'm gonna show you today and that is the cloud hosted model. And functionally, they are the same. As for the requirements for Liquid, we're only going to need port 443 open to the internet. And that's generally open in most environments. So we're good to go and everything is going to start with our identities. So let's open up the Liquid web portal and I'll sign in, which I'll do with just my local Liquid account because I haven't set up integration for anything else yet. And when you log in, you'll see some default apps presented here and we'll get to those in a little bit. For now, let's click manage at the top. Go down to the authentication section and on the right side, choose identity sources. And we're gonna wanna integrate Liquid right with our Azure Active Directory so we can allocate our applications to our existing users and groups. So click the Create button and select Azure AD, and you need to give this connector a name. And according to the blue box here, if you wanna use NTLM and Kerberos auth in the future, you should use your NetBIOS name, which for me is MS Azure Academy. And then I'll just put the same thing here for the display name and click Next. Now it wants an application ID and a secret, which means that we need an Azure Active Directory registered application. So over in the Azure AD portal, let's go to app registrations on the left and at the top, click new registration. I'll call my app liquid. And then because I have a single tenant, I can leave that middle section alone. And the redirect URI section here at the bottom, make sure that the left side box there says web, and then we need to put the URL for the Liquid workspace. And for me, that's msazureacademy.liquid.com. And now we need to add a little suffix to that, which will be slash API slash auth slash token slash end. And then click register. And all of these steps, by the way, are in the docs over at docs.liquid.com. And there's a few more things to do before we can go back to the Liquid side. Over on the left, go to Certificates and Secrets, and we wanna create a new client secret. Give your secret a name and set your expiration. Six months is just fine for me. And then click Add at the bottom. Now, critical thing here is that you must copy the secret value. Okay, once you click away from this screen, that value will be locked and there is no way to retrieve it. So I'll just save this to my notepad because there's a few different items we'll need in just a minute. On the left, go to API permissions and then click to add a permission. Select the Microsoft graph at the top and now select application. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and open up the users section. We want to add read all users full profiles. And now we need to add another permission again from the Microsoft graph. This one is going to be delegated. So in the search box type directory, and the one we want is the read directory data. Now that you've done both of those, you can click to grant admin consent and then click yes. All the permissions are done, so let's go back to the overview blade. You wanna copy the app ID as well as the tenant ID and save those over to your notepad. And then let's go back to the liquid portal. Paste in the application ID and your secret 
And then you want to click this button to fetch OAuth 2 URLs. Paste in your Azure AD tenant ID and click confirm. That'll set up all the rest of these URIs and all you need to do is just add a domain hint, which for me is msazureacademy.com. Click save at the bottom and then back in the overview, you can click the synchronize button and that'll just take a minute to synchronize all of your groups over into the Liquid Workspace, which you can verify by clicking on users and groups. And once you do, that means that your users can go to their contacts up at the top and see all of your users as well. So with the user side done, now you can allocate your applications. So let's talk about some applications. Now, one of the things that interested me in doing this review of Liquid is because their application catalog has over 3,600 applications that are already pre-configured and set up and basically all the work has been done for you. Well, in order for Liquid to reach out and find all that it's capable of doing, we need connectors. So let's go to manage at the top and in the automation section, go to connectors. And you can see I've got one here already. That's what's showing the apps that you saw in my workspace. So let's click create. And then we've got a whole list of options here from Citrix to configuration manager, RDS, WVD, and also the liquid setup store. Let's click that one and hit next. Give your connector a name. I'll just call it liquid setup store. And the one thing I'll call out on this page are the stages. Here we've got development selected, but you can change that to any one of the others. And this is exactly what it seems like. You can set up stuff in dev, test it for a while with some users, and then elevate those applications through the different phases of your environment. So select whichever one's right for you and hit next. The packaging type here refers to how the apps are refreshed and managed will refresh all of them in the background automatically which is what I prefer to do and have the tool do some of that work for me. Go ahead and click next. On the settings screen, check the box for include shortcuts. And then you have different shortcut types from launching the icon to help files, documentation, and more. For now, I'll just leave it on launch. But on the platforms, I want both x86 and x64. And then my only language is English. But of course, there's lots of other options for you to choose from. Go ahead and click next and then click finish. Now that you've got a new connector and then click the resources button right above it. And now we can see all of the list of applications that Liquid has ready to go. And I'm fine one that I'm interested in, which I'll pick Camtasia 2021. Now I generally use the Adobe Creative Cloud and Premiere Pro to edit all of my videos. So I thought it'd be interesting to try Camtasia. And here you can see some information about the app, including the stage at which it's going to be published in. So click next on the overview, and now we have the setup details. And here's where you can see some links that go out to the website that shows you how Liquid has done some of this packaging, as well as the vendor's website. So click next and then click configure. And here are all of the different options and features that you can set up, which will be in the answers file. So you can do a lot of customization for how you want this app to look and feel in your environment. Once you're good with all of that, click next. And now we need to entitle the application to make it usable. So I'll click on the little ellipsis here and give myself access. And in the entitlement here, we also see the different stages of when this user can use the application, dev, test, prod, etc. In the publish settings, this is where you can make the application available. And for now, I'll choose the catalog so I can show you another feature in just a moment. The native icon section is how you want the application presented to the user on their desktop, in the start menu, on the taskbar, or some combination of all of them. And this is gonna require the liquid agent, which we'll get to in a minute. And the last box here is for the approver. Now this will be applicable to necessarily every application in your environment, but the ones that are more high value or sensitive should have some kind of approval workflow before anybody can just get access. Now, before we click confirm, we wanna click over here to the events tab. This is where you can have multiple options depending on the different situations your users are in. So let's add an event here. And for example, we'll have one here that's called liquid login. This is when the user first gets on the machine and the liquid agent contacts the servers back home. 
and there are many other triggers that you can set up so you should be able to find whatever it is that you need. And now we need an action for that trigger. The only one here that really needs an explanation is distribute. The application will be downloaded in the background to the local cache so that when the user clicks on the icon, the icon will install and launch and do whatever it needs to do to make itself usable. Now one other thing I'll call out here is the uninstall action. This is very useful if you're doing an application upgrade. Say you want to remove Camtasia 2020 and then install Camtasia 2021. Your first action would be to uninstall and that'll happen as a background process. And then the next one will be to install the new version. And as far as the user goes, they just click on the same icon they've always clicked on and the application will be automatically updated. So let's go ahead and click confirm, click next, and then click finish. Now on the back end, what's happening is this answer file we've just created is being sent off to the Liquid servers to create all the unattended install files and the configuration tasks and everything that it needs to do what you want it to do. Once this is complete, we'll find Camtasia over in the catalog and I can go over there and click get and that's going to add it over to my workspace and it'll download that and set up the application, which will be done in a few minutes. So let's go back to our workspace while we wait for Camtasia and talk about one of the coolest features of Liquid, and that is what they like to call smart icons. Smart icons are where you can deliver the right application for the right user, specifically for the device they're on right now. All the user has to do is just click on the app that they want to run and Liquid will figure out the rest. Let me show you how it works. Let's right click on Excel and go to manage. At the bottom left here, we'll go to actions and now you can see what's called the launch sequence. And you can see that the first thing it will try to do is open Excel on an iPhone. So let's click on the first item here, Excel for Apple. And on the general tab, the first thing we can see is the process that it'll run. But now if we look at the filters, it's looking for the platform of iOS. And when the system sees you're not on iOS, it just skips to the next step and tries to run the 64-bit version of Excel. And you can add multiple different triggers and multiple filters and even sets of filters to create the exact experience that you want. And the final result is that the user just clicks on the icon that's familiar to them to do what they always do and the smart icons figure out all the rest. So now let's launch Excel and when I do, it goes right to Excel Online. Well, now why would that be happening? Well, you see, it's because I don't have a Liquid Agent installed, so it didn't have a way to actually activate my Excel software. But since I was compatible with opening Excel Online, it performed that action for me. So let's try another app. How about the calculator? And when I do, you see that it's going to tell me I need the agent in order to open that because the only option is to run calculator locally and that'll just take a quick minute to download. Now during the install here, we wanna call out two different items. The first here is what's being installed. This is the Liquid Agent and a launcher, which is a replacement for this web portal we've been working in. Click next, and now you have to add the URL for your Liquid workspace, which for me is msazureacademy.liquid.com. And setting up that workspace is all part of your onboarding process. Click next and then click finish. Now that we have our agent installed, when I click on the calculator, it just opens. And without me doing anything different at all, when I go back to Excel, it opens automatically as Excel 64-bit instead of Excel Online. Let's look at some more advanced smart icon scenarios with Azure Virtual Desktop. Now here's a fully built out workspace and you can see I've got multiple icons for paint. And there's a folder over there on the left on the desktop called WVD. And this first paint icon is configured with a dependency on a file that's in that folder. So when I launch paint, everything launches locally and it just works because I meet the filter criteria. But what happens if I delete that folder? As Soon as that's gone, I click on the same icon without having to refresh anything and you can see the Azure Virtual Desktop Launcher and Paint starts up in my virtual session. And this magic happens through the connector. So at the top, let's go to Manage, and on the left, we'll go to Connectors, and in the middle there, you can see the connector for Azure Virtual Desktop. And that's what links Liquid together with ABD. And if we click on the Create like we did before, you can see again all those options to Citrix, RDS, Config Manager, Okta, and more. So let's take a deeper look at that paint icon. 
right click on it and go to manage. And in the actions section here, we have the parameters. And the first parameter was to try to start locally. Then if that didn't work, try an RDP session. And if that didn't work, go to Azure Virtual Desktop. So let's click on the local parameter. And then you can see at the filter here that it's looking for that folder of WBD on the desktop with the file of WBD.txt. And that's why it was able to work the first time. But once I deleted the folder, that filter was no longer valid and it had to go to the next step. And because I couldn't get to the RDP server, it popped open virtual desktop. And while we've been looking at all of that, if we go back to our workspace, Camtasia has finished installing in the background and now the app is open so I can learn my new tool. All right, so let's sum up everything that we've talked about here. First, the pros, starting with the application catalog and over 3,600 apps, you can't go wrong. Lots of options. Delivery through the HTML5 web portal, Teams, API integration, SharePoint, and more. Along with that, smart icons. Fourth is migration. Liquid is a great centralized solution to help you move from one application platform to another. For example, moving from traditional platforms like RDS and Configuration Manager to Azure Virtual Desktop. To balance all of that, here are some of the cons. The first one here is that it can be very complex. And during my research for this video, I actually had to call them for help to figure out what exactly do I do to get started? So that would be the second con is the documentation and the path forward for me didn't seem very obvious. So a third thing here, and this is more of a non-technical con, and that is if you don't have good intercommunication in your organization, you could end up with a lot of rework. For example, you could get some folks who are working with individual platforms like Endpoint Manager, and they're still packaging things themselves in Intune.Win files, instead of just using Liquid as the one application platform to rule them all. And this can mean a duplication of work as well as user confusion. Do I open Liquid to open this application or is that one over there on the start menu? As far as pricing goes, I looked around on Liquid's website and I did find a page for how to buy. And you can see the last sentence here says that you should contact Liquid or a reseller partner. And I understand why companies do this. That way they don't have to keep pricing updated constantly on their website. But I do generally like to get at least a ballpark idea of what it is that this solution would cost me. So I reached out to our folks over at Liquid and they told me that I could share with you some of the details. Now their licensing is based on the number of registered users and each user can have up to five devices and on all of those devices, they have unlimited access to all of their applications. And these licenses can be based on yearly or monthly pricing. And the price per user is $5 a month or $60 per year. And that's for the cloud hosted solution. And there's even more discounts that are available depending on the number of users that you have in your environment. So it's best to contact Liquid or one of their authorized resellers to get exact pricing for you. As far as deal breakers go, the only real one that I can think of is the amount of complexity. And this is one that you'll all have to judge for yourselves. Now this complexity can be a pretty big barrier to entry and Liquid understands that. So they do offer free hands-on training for all of their new users to bring them up to speed, which I think is a nice value add. So overall, I think that this is an excellent solution and if you have a ton of apps or multiple environments that you have to run and maintain all your apps in, definitely consider what Liquid has to offer. Finally, if you're interested in learning more, you can contact Liquid for a demo and just fill out this request form and the link for that is in the video description. So tell me what you all think. Are you using Liquid already? If not, do you think it might be the right solution for you? And do you want to see the Azure Academy do other product reviews like this? If so, comment below with which product or service you want me to review and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you in our next video. Happy learning.